I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty Toyota Camry XSE V6 TRD without launch control. Okay, so the mid range there was nothing, but before that and after that, not bad. Horsepower and torque. 301 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque from a 3.5 liter V6. And before we get into the TRD of this, let's talk about the competitors. We've got the Fusion Sport that's pretty much dead, the Accord Sport, the Sonata N-Line coming up, which probably will be a competitor for this, then the Mazda 6 and the Passat GT. And when you said Fusion Sport, which is pretty much dead, it's definitely dead. Okay, but I mean, you can still probably pick them up on a lot. Yeah, I probably Brand use new. one. Nah. Ah, come on. It's like two years out, man. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason it's dead. Yeah. So this is a TRD, not a TRD Pro. Yeah, so it's essentially a package on the XSE V6, but it deletes some features from the interior and stuff like that, but it's actually cheaper than the XSE V6. It's a very weird thing that they did, but I kind of like it. So the whole point of it is to make it sportier, but not really with power, mostly looks and a little bit of suspension. Quite a bit of suspension, but yeah, mostly looks. You remember, I really like the looks of the XSE V6, the white and black one with the red interior. Yeah, I like that one as well. And this one is way over the top version of that. This is as fast and furious as they could make it from the factory but like be acceptable, you know what I mean? Yeah, because if you did this from the aftermarket and you showed up to a meet, you'd probably get laughed at. Yes. But with a TRD badge, you're okay. All is forgiven. You kind of get some respect, I think, maybe. Although for this one, I'm kind of not sure. Okay, so starting with the front, pretty much the same XSE bumper, but we've got a lip kit. Yeah, we got black grills everywhere. They are real and there's some fakeness kind of behind them, but I appreciate that it is all real. And then the headlights look awesome in amber, not the white DRL kind of thing, because there is no real DRL. Yeah, I think the amber bulb is nice when you're not running cool looking DRLs. Yeah, like this doesn't have like really nice looking LED strips or anything like that. But front end, I think it looks really good. I still think it looks better than the Accord. So now if we move on to the side, you see more body kit and you see that new wing which we'll talk about at the back. Yeah, so let's stick to the actual side. So yeah, we do have this massive side skirt and I appreciate that it's actually like this sparkly gloss. It's not just gloss black, it actually has flake in it. Yeah, it's actually got a ton of flake in it if you look up close. And then the wheels also look awesome. They almost look like full race car wheels. Yeah, I couldn't believe them when I first saw them. I'm like, wow, these are really nice looking wheels. Like, I wouldn't mind purchasing these ones aftermarket. And then what is the Continental recommended tire for the Toyota Camry? TRD. The Continental Sport Contact 5. And behind those wheels, we have red brake calipers. And in the front, we have slightly bigger brakes than the regular XSE. Okay, and then on the body, as for the body lines, with this paint, this red, it really pops. And we've got a very pronounced body line that sticks out right along near the top. And I should mention that this is an optional paint, so you do have to pay for this particular paint probably worth it. Like it, I think it, so. It looks really good. It's a good looking red. And then looking up top, we do have not really a floating roof. Missing but, roof design. Yeah, missing roof design. So there is that flake in it as well. I think it looks pretty cool. A little bit weird at the back where it meets the actual red paint. But, but see, I, I really like that. And that's part of the reason why I like the looks of the XSE more than I liked the Accord. I just like the flake in it. I think it looks really good. And now moving on to the back end, the coolest part is we've got this low profile spoiler that actually sticks out a whole bunch and looks pretty cool. And it also has that metallic flake in it. I think it looks pretty funny. It's a little bit awkward. It's a little over the top. It is, but when you look at the lip kit around the whole thing, the diffuser at the back, the exhaust, which is really cool, it all kind of matches. It does match, but the wing is just very extra. It needs, it needs that wing. <laughs> and then speaking about that diffuser, it looks pretty cool. And those exhaust tips look amazing and actually sound pretty good. So let's have a listen. <laughs> But like, how good does that look? That's 2000s real. Yeah, yeah, that's real, real. And they're nice rolled tips. I, I like what they did a lot. And it says TRD on the tips as well. But the only thing is with this exhaust sound, I found that it drones a little bit at certain RPMs because it is a V6 with an exhaust. So that tends to kind of happen. But it, it sounds really good when you're just parked and revving it. And you can rev all the way out, which yeah. most cars don't let you do. Let's rev that again. <laughs> Apparently you can even do it in neutral while rolling. You can always do it in neutral <laughs> while rolling. So overall, looks wise, better than an XSE or not? 
I'm not really sure. I think yes minus the wing. I think more childish than an XSE, maybe not better, but I overall really like it. Now let's see if there's some performance with this. Send into Cliche Corner for me. Yeah, I gotta keep it in automatic because the manual transmission kind of sucks. Yeah, we'll get to that later. <laughs> and you can hear tire squeal and just like a whole bunch of understeer. Yeah, so this is front wheel drive. But it is very flat. Ish. You could tell that like if you set it up right, it could probably do some damage on the track. Yeah, this is definitely flatter handling than the regular XL EV6 that we drove, and that already handled pretty good, but this is much better. So TRD really worked on the suspension on this mostly. And then steering wise through there, like everything felt good, nothing felt weird. I know a lot of cars will feel weird, like you hated the M5, which is not a competition for this, but I felt fully in control and I knew what the car was doing. And I disagree with you on the steering, but I'll get to that when I drive. So comparing this to the competition, which would be sedans that look faster, but aren't really faster, maybe have some suspension tuning or body kit. Does this look better than everything else? Like, does it look better than the Passat GT? I mean, the Passat GT looks cleaner. It's definitely not over the top. Accord Sport? Again, that's much cleaner looking. Like you, you almost can't tell it's a sport. And then we haven't seen the Sonata N-Line but I think the Sonata N-Line would probably look better than this, but I think this overall wins for the most Fast and Furious version. Oh, 100% most Fast and Furious. I don't think it's the best looking though. It's definitely the no, craziest yeah, yeah. looking. Would you be, would you want to own this? Or no, I'd, not really? I'd be embarrassed too, to I would, be honest. <laughs> I'd probably go with just the XSE. Exactly. Like it's hard. <laughs> yeah. But kudos to whoever does get this. Yeah, I'd be embarrassed that I drive a Prowler, but yeah. <laughs> at least I don't have fenders. So with the looks out of the way, time to get you behind the wheel, talk about driving an interior because I know you're pretty cramped in this passenger seat right here. Yeah, this is the worst part of this car is sitting on the passenger side. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Well, for me. I'm not cramped at all over here. Yeah, you're not. Time to floor it though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously front wheel drive. Again, not really the fastest, no launch control, but not that bad. It's pretty good. And like, this is kind of a lot of power for front wheel drive. A lot of cars have a lot less. Yeah, and to be honest, the first time that I got in here and I drove it, I'm like, huh, this is faster than I remember. I know we say dad fast a lot, but this is definitely dad fast. This is like the definition of dad fast. Exactly. So if you're not sure what dad fast is, go test drive an XSE V6 or a TRD if you can get one, because these are actually very limited. So let's send this into Cliche Corner and then I will break down exactly what TRD added to this. Like you said, definitely some understeer, but there is quite minimal body roll compared to the regular XSE. So if you're not okay with daily driving a stiff suspension car, you'll probably be okay in this because it's not too stiff. It's really not bad for dailying, but like definitely the looks are more jarring than the suspension. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're okay with the looks, the suspension won't be an issue because it's not bad. That's pretty true. Okay, so let's get into the TRD stuff. So they lowered it with their own TRD tuned suspension. It's a little bit lower than the standard XSE. Then they added a bunch of braces underneath the car. And there's also a V-brace behind the rear seats, which makes you not able to fold them down. That's kind of a deal breaker, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that they did that. Like. Did it really add that much? And like, well, I mean, it is very stiff. Yeah, but it's not overly stiff. Yeah, but that's pretty, probably the perfect decision to make. I guess. And there's also stiffer front and rear sway bars, which will help with the body roll. So we've already addressed the power. Now let's talk about this eight speed transmission. I'm gonna floor it. A Little bit slow to downshift, but it sounds pretty good. It, it definitely sounds very good for what this is. But back to the actual transmission. So it is an eight speed auto, nothing crazy here. We do have paddles, but they're more for gear limiting. So if I'm gonna downshift right now, it'll actually let me. But if I'm flooring it and then I try and upshift, it probably won't actually upshift there. Yeah, so it's not the best. It's pretty much exactly everything we complain about in F Sport Lexuses. Yeah, so basically just don't use the paddles and put this into sport shifting with this actual shifter, which says TRD on it, by the way. And then you can also turn off the traction, but only when you're fully stopped. And that definitely helps because if you have the traction on, it'll totally bog down. Yeah, that's the only reason I was able to do that front wheel drive burnout launch thing. But once you turn traction control off, the middle display in the gauges always says traction control off. It'll say click back to get rid of it. You click back to get rid of it, pops up right away. Even if you don't stop. It's really intrusive. Like, okay, maybe I want traction off and I want to see my digital display of my speed. No. Yeah, it doesn't let you. It's like- Just, just a reminder, your traction is off, which is probably a good idea for anyone who buys this car. But back to this transmission, when you're driving normally and you're not using the paddles and you have it in sport shifting, I find that it just gear hunts quite a bit. Like. It doesn't know what gear to be in and then it'll downshift and it kind of takes a while. So like right now, if I'm gonna half floor it and then I let off and then it's like, 
it's just not sure what gear to be in. It's like, are you still flooring it? Are you going to floor it again? But I think that's good because if you are flooring it, it's not kicking you out right away. And then like still the downshift will work pretty like quickly. Yeah, the downshifts will work, but not the upshifts, which takes a lot of the fun out of it. The whole transmission takes a lot of the fun out of this car because that engine is actually pretty good, but the transmission just makes it kind of feel like it sucks. And if this had a manual transmission, I know it doesn't exist anymore. No one cares, blah, blah, blah. Nobody buys them, but like, the position, like where your arm would be, like there's a lot of room where your legs are, like this would be friggin' cool. And you can get the Accord in the manual, so let's not forget that. Yes, yes. Okay, so into these drive modes, we've got Eco Normal Sport. I really don't find a difference between any of them. No, except for that color change in the middle of the gauge. Pretty much. And then back to that steering that you mentioned that you didn't have any issues with earlier, I actually do have an issue with. At first, it doesn't really do anything, like this loose part, and then it kind of does stuff, and then I'm okay with it. But it's that first initial looseness that doesn't give me that sport sedan feeling. And, but that first initial looseness doesn't bother me because unlike the M240i, I don't feel this is drifting while I'm driving. True. So it's like, it, it doesn't really make a difference to me. It just doesn't inspire handling confidence to me. <laughs> yeah, you're not inspired, but it is there. This car is not your life, coach. No, it's it's definitely not. <laughs> so now let's get into this interior. As we touched on it a couple times earlier, we're kind of jumping all over the place. Passenger seating is kind of cramped for me, but it's totally fine if you're a little bit shorter like Yuri. And everything looks really cool in here. I love the swoopy design. I remember when this came out, everyone's like, oh my God, shapes, Toyota's gone off the deep end. It's a little crazy looking, but it looks cool. Nah, I, I like it a lot and the materials they use are cool. We've got red stitching, everything is mostly soft. And then we've got this cool pattern, which like isn't carbon fiber, but it's also textured kind of carbon fiber. And then from my driving position, I'm totally okay in here, not too cramped. I can actually move the steering wheel to a pretty comfortable position. My driving position overall is pretty good. And like you mentioned earlier, you've got the TRD branded shifter, but we also have TRD branded seats and red seat belts. Yeah, and the seats themselves actually look pretty cool as well. We got a ton of red on them, but yeah, there's red seat belts. That's, that's a characteristic of type R crazy cars that a lot of cars in this class don't go to the seatbelt thing. They just kind of leave them black. Bet you GT N-Line's gonna go with the colored seatbelts. Oh, they will for sure. And then the Elantra GT N-Line had red seatbelts, I think. Oh yeah, I guess the GT. Which was the Elantra GT Sport for a while. Yeah. I mean, I feel like red seatbelts isn't that crazy for the cars that are trying to look cool that aren't Lately, that more cars are getting it, but like the Passat doesn't have anything like that. The Fusion never would have had anything like that. Passat, Passat gets the red line. Yeah, on the outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same stuff, tell you, Matt. The, the red lines. Red. And then, like the last Camry we drove, we do have a cell phone holder here that will slide forward and hide your phone for a compartment below. But it does not have wireless charging because this is the TRD, so it gets deleted. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And then we've got cup holders, which will fit this crushed up can of buble <laughs> just fine. Should we check the visors? Probably this the same is, as last this time. Is not looking good. Three, two, one. Fail. Yeah. We got the extension. Uh, flap doesn't go all the way. And like we said in our last video, sometimes the sun still gets through there. It does, it really does. And we have the same sparkly gloss black infotainment section here, and the infotainment finally has Android Auto. You mean you don't need to worry about using Amazon Alexa to drive your car now? Yeah, no, to order my Amazon supplies while I'm driving. I, don't, I just don't get Amazon Alexa. But anyways, no issues here. We have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, obviously. Yes, and we've got rewinding satellite radio just like the last one. And if you have your home screen set up correctly, you can have your rewinding and forwarding satellite radio set up right there. So when you have your hand on the shifter, it's right within reach. And then we don't have a 360 camera. We actually have a pretty terrible resolution backup camera. Yeah, but it's the same gen. Like they can't really change stuff halfway through. You know what I mean? I'm just stating it. And one really nice thing that we have is a volume knob and a tuning knob, and they're in line with each other, so I don't have to reach across the dash. Yes, and then we got seek and track on the right. I don't know, do they always have that tuning knob, or do you think they added that? I don't that remember. After all, like the people yelling over everything. Maybe. Watch our last video and let us know. And then oh. back seat room is also pretty good. I have no problem fitting back there. Yeah, I actually have really good headroom at six foot one and a half. Well, what could you expect from a taxi cab? <laughs> Right? Yo, this would be the coolest taxi you can have as a TRD. This is going to come up. Someone's going to be Ubering this for sure. I don't think so. Maybe though, because it is actually cheaper than getting an XSC V6. Yeah, you might as well just get this. Yeah. And obviously, we're not going to box this just because it is not a hatch, but. Here's a look at the trunk. There's lots of room and we have grocery bag hangers and a cool TRD mat in there. So that's pretty much it with the Camry TRD. Let's get to the price. It's actually not that much money. $36,785. Sounds like a great deal to me. I think so too. It's actually cheaper than the XSC V6. Because this looks so wacky, even though it is a little bit embarrassing, but I mean, I drive a Prowler, so who am I to talk? 
I'd probably get this over the XSE. I see the value in it, but I still think I would get the XSE V6 just because this is a little too outlandish for myself. So let us know where the Camry TRD falls in line with your sedans that look fast but aren't really that fast. And here's a quick reminder of all the ones they compete with. Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, I'm saying that. I brought that back. Hit you the know, notification yeah. bell. <laughs> Patreon.com slash straight pipes. Teespring. We got Teespring, merch. Oh <laughs> Yeah, we can end it with that. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The video's done now. <laughs> and then we'll play the old outro too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. This is a subscription break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even. We didn't do that. <laughs>